Hello dear friends, it's time today to talk about the news of the day. Opinion piece. G7 agrees on tax hike. Creates a 15% global tax. The tax is aimed at large companies. Tech giants and tax havens target of the agreement. The Spanish government wants a 2050 without cars and all on bicycles. Central bank digital currency challenges dollar hegemony. Lack of graphic cards causes stampede at a Texas store. Two Cox Media Group TV stations suffer cyber attack. Federal judge strikes down California assault weapons ban. Pentagon refuses to rule out the existence of a extraterrestrial. Media uses UFO report to promote arms race. Chinese military has its own UFO task force and is overwhelmed. Ron Paul, Rand Paul says he has received threats for his confrontation with Fauci. Canada denounces Vatican over church-directed abuse of schoolchildren. Gemma Caldenar resigns to Pope over sex abuse scandals. Chinese youths prefer to lie down in the face of pressure from their labor system. One pupil attends, one student attends his graduation with the Mexican flag and is denied a diploma in the US. Let's start. Finance Minister of the Groups of Seven Rich Nations reached a, heist, a historic agreement Saturday to lay the groundwork for a new international tax system by instituting a universal 15% minimum tax on large multinational corporations such as digital giants in the territories where, where they make their profits. Economic leaders from the United Kingdom, the United States, France, Germany, Italy, Canada and Japan endorsed the reform of the global tax system at the end of a two-day meeting at Lancaster House in central London. This agreement could form the basis of a new universal tax system. Part of the pact will be the establishment of a new 15% minimum tax on technology multinationals. The new tax is expected to be paid in the countries where the multinationals sell the most products. This agreement allows more money to be extracted from multinational companies such as Amazon, Google and Apple and reduces their incentive to move profits to low tax havens as they can now legally tax the business they generate in other countries in a country with advantages tax conditions announced the British Treasury Minister Rishi Sunak. OECD calls agreement a historic step. The OECD said Saturday that the G7 agreement on global tax on large multinationals and internet giants is a historic step and the only way to put an end to distortions and inequalities, said the organization's Secretary General Matthias Corman. Spain is preparing a historic increase in fuel taxes. The government's intention is to bring fuel prices closer to the average tax rate for gasoline in the eight main European Union countries, which is around 20 euro cents more expensive per liter. Fools are one of the most intervened and taxed products in Spain. President Sanchez wants a 2050 without private cars and with more bicycles. According to Moncloa's 2050 document, there 
will then be fewer private vehicles and more shared vehicles on Spanish roads, as well as more bicycles and more public transport. Criticism of restrictions. The president of the Junta de Castilla y León, Alfonso Fernández Mañueco, has criticized the Spanish government's obstinacy in increasing restrictions, which are so damaging to the economy at a time when health indicators are on the decline. Muslim neighborhoods in British cities are no-go zones for whites. An academic who studied Muslim integration in Britain revealed in a new book that women and children in some communities are subject to Taliban-like rules and non-Muslims face threats of violence. United States Yellen calls for fiscal support for recovery. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said Saturday she's urging wealthy G7 democracies and other countries to maintain fiscal support for their economic recovery and to make investments to combat inequality. Yellen asked other wealthy nations on Saturday to maintain spending to support their economies even as the health care crisis subsides and said inflation would be elevated but transitory this year. Tech leads Wall Street higher. Stocks rose Friday after a tepid monthly jobs report eased investor concert that the Federal Reserve may soon curb monetary stimulus. The Labor Department said Friday that 559,000 jobs were created in May below expectations compared with a figure on 278,000 in the previous month. The labor market improved in May but remains weak, with 7.6 million fewer jobs than in February 2020. Central bank digital currency challenges dollar's global hegemony. Central bank digital currency could dislodge the dollar from its stratosphere and test its global dominance, said Navigator's chief investor officer Kyle Shostak. Nations around the world increasingly need to diversify as Washington uses the dollar to accept political and economic pressure on rivals, according to investment guru Jim Rogers. Computer. The two stations, um, excuse me, two TV stations suffer cyber attacks. In quotes, we can only communicate with each other throughout personal phones and text messages, said an employee of one TV station. First it was gas, then it was meat, now it's local television stations. At least two TV news stations have been completely offline since Thursday, in what cybersecurity experts say appears to be a ransomware attack on their parent company. ABC affiliate WFTV in Orlando, Florida and NBC affiliate WPXI in Pittsburgh, both owned by Cox Media Group, were instructed Thursday by managers to shut down the company's computers and phones. A store replenishes its stock of graphics cards and causes an unusual stampede. In recent months, those parts have become very hard to come by, mainly due to the lack of semiconductors and the growing demand by cryptocurrency miners. Chaotic scenes were recorded Thursday at the Micro Center chain store in Dallas, in Dallas, Texas, after it announced it had restocked NVIDIA graphics cards. Zuckerberg acknowledges firing employees who leak compromising information. 
A new leak shows Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg harsh, harshly criticizing employees who leaked information regarding alleged censorship carried out by the social networking giant of users' posts. The Soviet computer that would have been the world's first smart home. It was to help dispense with televisions, tape recorders, computers, and other household appliances. Decades before Apple and Google, specialists in the Soviet Union, conceived a technological revolution and created an integrated system that would have been the world's first smart home. The, futur the futuristic computer, called Sphinx, was created in 1980s by industrial designer Dmitry Avrigan. With this development, Soviet specialists predicted the emergence of Wi-Fi laptops, cell phones, smartwatches, and even the wireless connection of household appliances, the Internet of Things. Justice. Justice won't size Trump records. The Justice Department said Saturday it did no longer seek information from reporters in the leaks investigation after recent revelations that former President Trump's administration secretly obtained phone and email records of several journalists. Josh Rolls California assault weapons ban unconstitutional. A federal judge ruled that California's ban on carrying assault weapons is unconstitutional, overturning the state's more than 30-year veto and dealing a blow to, gov to Governor Gavin Newsom's policy on gun control. Ron Paul says he has received threats over confrontation with Fauci. Senator Rand Paul, Republican of Kentucky, has said his public fight with the President's chief medical advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci, over the origins of the bug has resulted in multiple death threats against him and his family. Canada Trudeau criticizes Vatican over church-run abuse of school children. The Catholic Church must take responsibility for its role in running many of Canada's residential schools for little Indians, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said Friday, following the discovery of the remains of 215 minors. Canada demands apology from Catholic Church for abuse. Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau demanded Friday an apology from the Catholic Church and Pope Francis for the abuse suffered by indigenous people in residential schools in his country after the recent discovery of the remains of 215 buried. German Cardinal resigns to Pope over sex abuse scandals. German Cardinal Reinhard Marx has tended his resignation to Pope Francis. He has done so because of the sexual abuse catastrophe, in quotes, in the church, not for having participated in them, but because he has affirmed that he is a co-responsible. In a letter addressed to the pontiff, to the pontiff on May 21st, and rebuilt by the Archdiocese of the southern German city, Marx admitted that the abuse investigations have shown, have shown much personal failure and administrative mistakes. In quotes. China Hungarians protest against the Chinese university campus. Thousands of Hungarians some carrying banners reading Trishan protested on Saturday against Chinese universities' plans to open a campus in Budapest. Chinese youths prefer to lie around in the new trend in the face of the pressure of work culture and the pace of modern life. 
In efforts to earn a living, young people end up exhausted by a culture of hard work with little reward. Among Chinese youth, a new trend is spreading called Tang Ping, which metaphorically means to lie down, because of discouragement from the pressure of their hard work culture and endless work with little reward. They don't want to be slaves. Chinese, Chinese ships sail more than 12,000 kilometers in the Pacific for maneuvers. The drill, which lasted about a month, consisted of about 20 exercises, including anti-missile and anti-aircraft tests. Chinese Navy ships have completed a training maneuver far from, he, from its waters in the Pacific Ocean. The Chinese Army's Southern Theater Command reported that the ships traversed the Celebes Sea, located between the Philippines and Indonesia, and sailed a total of more than 12,400 kilometers over the past 30 days. Chinese coal mine accidents. Two people were killed and 12 were missing after two separate coal mine accidents in China, a state broadcaster reported Saturday. Philippines files criminal complaint against former Wirecat CEO. Philipp Philippine authorities investigating multi-million dollar fraud at Germany's Wirecat have filed criminal complaints against the payments company's former chief operating officer and others. Americas A student at Asheboro High School in North Carolina was not given his graduation diploma because he had dropped the Mexican flag over his gown. What started out, out as one of the happiest moments of his life ended in massive outreach after the controversial images went viral. Puerto Rican actress Rita Moreno named adopted daughter of San Juan. Legendary Puerto Rican actress Rita Moreno, who presented her documentary Rita Moreno, Just a Girl Who Decided to Go For It on the Island, was named adopted daughter of San Juan de Puerto Rico. Peru's rural poor find a voice before the elections. Her name is Luceli Banda Medina, a former student of presidential candidate Pedro Castillo. When 21 years old, Luceli, the first woman in her family to read and write, left the poor and isolated village of Puna in northern Peru to study nursing. She always dreamed of what her life would have been like if she had been born in a city. Everything is ready in Peru for the second round of the presidential elections. In view of the elections to be held this Sunday, the use of political propaganda has been prohibited, as well as the sale of alcoholic beverages from this Saturday until Monday. More than a hundred observers from 15 international missions of the European Union, the Organization of American States and the Inter-American Union of Electoral Organizations will watch over the transparency of the voting. Controversy in Chile for the prisoners of the revolt. They are called prisoners of the revolt. They are around 2,500 people who are detained in Chile among them minors, awaiting trial. They were accused of vandalism, arson and attacks on private property during the historic social protests of 2019. From the opposition, they assured that in reality they are political prisoners and should be benefited with a generalized pardon. But President Sebastián Piñera has already warned that they are not det detained for their ideas, 
but for having committed crimes, so he will veto any initiative that protects their release. Drivers in Cuba continue to use Lada cars. In Cuba, the legendary Lada cars are considered special cars because during the Soviet era they flooded the island. Today, their owners keep them alive despite the lack of spare parts and dozens of years of permanent use. In Havana, a proud group of owners of these relics has created a club that in addition to taking care of their cars, also engages in a broad social agenda. Taki Turkish airstrike kills at least three at Iraq refugee camp. A, Turk a Turkish airstrike killed at least three people Saturday at a camp for displaced people in northern Iraq, said Rashad Kelali an official with the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan Party. Sea mucus in Turkey. A thick layer of sea foam and mucilag is covering large part of the coast of Istanbul and the Sea of Marmara these days. The proliferation of the mucilag is caused by the large amount of sea waste, agricultural and industrial waste pollutants which could seriously affect the fishing industry. Baghdad warns that Iran and Turkey's construction of dams will lead to water shortages. The construction of new dams on the Tigris and Euphrates rivers by Iran and Turkey could lead to water shortages in Iraq by 2035, Iraqi President Baram Saleh said. Ufology The Pentagon doesn't dare to rule out the existence of UFOs. Intelligence services are very close to making public the reports on the more than 120 sightings of aerial phenomena recorded over the last two decades. However, media such as the New York Times are already advancing the conclusion of these investigations. The Pentagon doesn't confirm that these are unidentified flying objects, but neither can it rule it out, according to Anton Parada. Excuse me. Media uses UFO report to promote arms race. This will be not the last time the media warns us that UFOs on radar are a sign of a terrifying gap in technology that would leave the US defenseless against Russia and China, according to Australian journalist Caitlin Johnstone. The New York Times has published an article on the content of the expected government report on UFOs based on statements by anonymous officials and touting narratives convenient to the business of war. The US Air Force refuses to buy F-35S. The US Air Force wanted to buy more F-15EX advanced Eagle fighters instead of the F-35 Lightning II, Defense News reports, citing the Pentagon's fiscal year 2022 request. The Chinese Army has its own UFO task for force and has been overwhelmed by increased reports on sightings. The Pentagon is not alone in investigating the strange objects detected in the sky. According to reports, the Chinese military has also been tracking UFOs and in recent years has recorded an increase in sightings. The People's Liberation Army relies on reports from military radar stations, Air Force pilots, police stations, weather stations, and observatories of the Chinese Academy of Sciences to gather as much data as possible on mysterious flying objects. But Chinese analysts have been overwhelmed in recent years by the growing number of sighting reports 
from a wide range of military and civilian sources, prompting the UFO task force to rely on artificial intelligence to help sort through the data. Augmented reality to train pilots. The company Red6, a manufacturer of air combat training systems, has released a video showing the progress that has been made augmented reality and artificial intelligence technologies used by the Air Force to train its pilots. The system reproduces the image and maneuvers of virtual objects in a real dynamic environment, allowing pilots to visualize simulated enemy aircraft in real time and even recreate high-speed flights. Red 6 new system allows training engagements to be conducted against various types of enemy aircraft. Message from Matthew Except from Matthew Ward's last message throughout his mother Susan Ward on June 2, 2021 by Steve Biko. The surges of energy that are propelling the Earth along her ascension path is raising the frequency worldwide. This will continue until she reaches her destination in high fifth density, where Gaia, the soul incarnate as the planet, remained during the long ages when accumulated negativity spiraled her body down into deep third density. Only readers of information from the messengers of light know that Earth is steadily ascending, ascending into higher astral planes, but two effects of the increased frequency level are clearly evident, although not attributed to them. One is the sensation of time passing faster and faster. Linear time exists on Earth because all third density civilizations that have inhabited the planet needed a chronological means to function coherently. However, that concept of time is actually energy fields in the timeless continuum, where what you consider past, present, and future are a series of simultaneous events. In some ways, we could say that the Earth is approaching the continuum, but it is more accurate to say that its population is interpreting the sensation of a successively lighter energy because time seems to be passing faster than before. And following their clocks and calendars, what wo was once a week, only 20 years ago, is now condensed into two days. Due to divine grace, shall we say, the laws of physics governing this universe are regulating the tides and the rising and setting off the sun and moon, so everything is happening as expected despite the running out of linear time. The other effect of the steadily increasing frequency is the steady increase of both positive and negative characteristics and behavior. The, the later explain the remarkable increase, increase in homicides, random shootings, massacres, bigotry-based acts, and other violent and criminal acts that have been occurring around the world. The mainstream media reports on these distressing events but rarely mentions the positive effects of the higher vibrations. The growing abundance of kindness, respectful communication and cooperative efforts, qualities and actions that will continue to expand within society in accordance, in accordance with their rising vibrations. The energy of dark intentions and activities emits lower vibrations and those cannot coexist with the higher ones. All that is based in darkness will continue to diminish until it has no more energy, and so it will come to an end. We remind you of other things we have talked about, simply by being the pure love or light energy 
of creator source. You are radiating the most powerful force in the cosmos into the world. You are every thought and feeling is prayer, and prayers are powerful. So think and feel positive and optimistic about what is to come. Words spoken and written have power. Be careful to choose your words wisely. Smiles a lot, a lot. Generosity, gratitude, compassion, empathy, and every small act of thoughtfulness sent out giddy vibrations and visualization is also powerful. See crowds of people dancing in joy, joy, joyous, joyous celebration and children playing happily with animals. Visualize the earth immersed in brilliant golden white light. Imagine the planet with crystal clear waters, forest, forests instead of scarified land, crops growing on land that, in, that is now desert, fields of flowers as far as the eye can see, air free of pollution. All of the above is love in action, A love is the key to a peaceful world where people live in harmony with each other and with nature. Dear one, Dear ones, love begins with oneself. Please love yourself the way we love you. All beings of light in this universe honor you for steadily, steadfastly helping earth civilization manifest the kind of world they want for themselves and all generations to come. With unconditional love, we support you every step of your trip. Love and peace. Susan Ward. And that's all for today. Thanks a lot, dear friends.